Yeah, g'day and welcome back to the channel. Long time viewers know I've been working on this beautiful old Schaublin 125 CNC lathe, kind of modernizing it and bringing it back to life. This week, I'm working on the central way oiling. The apron's the oil tank on this machine, and it's got a hand pump to pump lube oil through into the various slideways, and I need to pull it all apart, clean it out, make sure it works. Get another copper crush washer there. Playing with oil tanks, I remember a story from oh, two decades ago. Continental Airlines initiated a new flight from Newark to Narita in Japan. And the GE90 requires a fair bit of oil. It's just one of the aspects of the, of the way they do the sump pressurization. So anyway, plane flies into Newark with you know red carpet and VIPs, all the media in that for an inaugural flight. And of course, one of the Continental mechanics would have gone in with a case of oil, but you don't want a mechanic running around in his overalls with all the VIPs in that now, do you? So they shoot him away. Turns out they never came back to do the oil because that first inaugural flight had to do an in-flight diversion to Guam due to low oil level. Oops. I bought a new lens. I had been using this Canon lens with an adapter. That's one of the cool things about Micro Four Thirds. You can adapt almost any lens to them. This lens doesn't fit a speed booster, so it ends up being not terribly wide and it doesn't focus very closely. But I've been looking for a decent Micro Four Thirds zoom, but I didn't really want to buy one new because filming grinding, filming welding, you know, it's going to destroy the lens sooner or later. So I figured I'd wait until one comes up that's already damaged. And this one was advertised with a scratch on the lens. It's only a minor scratch, no big deal. Thanks very much, Brendan, for selling it at a good price. It's a nice lens. So this is the actual oil pump. Cast iron housing. Looks like an oil inlet port. There's probably going to be a couple of check valves inside it. And I'm guessing that the oil output port's going to be through the end here. Let's have a look in the drawing. These three parts is the oil tank. Down here you can see where the oil comes in. It gets sucked in through that first check valve, pressurized in the second chamber here with the spring in it. Exits out pressurized through this check valve. You've got one, two main oil paths and here's the metering orifice where the oil comes down here. So the oil comes up through these two ports, goes down through this metering valve and comes here where it lubricates the gib strip. This looks like the oil inlet port on this side. And then there's a pin through on the other side just to restrict the range of movement. Let's disassemble this. So the screw comes out. Behind it there should be a ball, a spring, and another ball. Well, that was cool. There comes a ball. I'm guessing the mushroom just, oh yeah, just screws off. So here it is on a V-block, ready to punch that pin out, and I've just put a G-clamp lightly on it. It's not clamping it all the way, but hopefully just restrain the thing once the pin comes out, because I don't really want spring-loaded parts flying through the basement. Okay, so once again, we've got a fine spring and a ball. Then here in the main body, another spring with the washer on the end of it. So I'll load all of this stuff into a jar and give it a good ultrasonic cleaning. I don't think there's any brass in this lot. This is all steel or iron, so I can do all of that with sodium hydroxide. Oh cool, I got some post. 
Oh, now that's really cool. Check this out. Pyro saw my video where I mentioned that I only had one full-size collet missing for my collet set for the Shoblin, the size number 16. And Pyro very generously bought one and donated it to my set. So Pyro, thanks very much. That's excellent. I really appreciate it. Very generous of you. Now ideally I'd like to put this whole cast iron tank into a caustic bath because this paint at the bottom is already chipping away really badly. Yeah, I'd like to get it all out, but the problem is there's this little fitting here. I think it's some sort of an oil metering valve or something, metering orifice. That's bronze. And if I put that in caustic, that's going to get attacked. I'll have to try some other form of cleaning solution. Well, I'm not exactly sure how well the ultrasonic's going to work on this, but I'll start with Tikapur TR3, which is a citric based cleaner. Oh wait, this... this doesn't fit. Okay, looks like I'm gonna have to get some wooden strips or something to pack it up off the floor. Well, I just cut up some old conduit and put that in as a spacer to, for it to sit on. Another one of our viewers, Phil, who lives here in Vienna, gave me a tour of his machine shop and also gave me a bunch of these storage bins. So I need to make up a, some sort of a shelf so that I'll slide in. Thanks a lot, Phil. And another local guy, Christian, popped around and dropped me off this bunch of old hard drives and other aluminium for my casting, which I really appreciate because I was pretty much out of aluminium. There's also a really, really nice box in here. That's too nice to melt down. I'll probably find a use for that. Thanks very much, Christian. Thumbs up, appreciate it. I've had a bit of a think about how I'm gonna stop this bore and the other bore further in from getting damaged when I sandblast. Now that inner bore is 22 millimeters and I found this piece of scrap which already has a 22 millimeter feature. But just in case it gets stuck, I wanna be able to pull it back out. So I'll just face off the end, put a hole in it, put a thread in it so I can always put a bolt or something on it and pull it back out with that. Even a slide hammer if necessary. this plastic which will fit nicely in here so I need to chop a piece off that now that's all taped up it's off to the sandblaster I won't take the camera the sandblaster blows a bit of dust out and I don't particularly want my camera getting covered in sand does anyone think I should do a review of this cheap and nasty sandblasting cabinet if you do want me to review it give this video a thumbs up and tell me in the comments section a little longer than a few minutes later the sandblasting has got most of it out there's still a wee bit sticking to the sides, but it's not too bad. Obviously that's pretty well stuck on. To paint this, I'm gonna need some sort of a oil resistant paint. So I'll probably use an epoxy two component paint. My original plan was to do it with like rattle cans, but then I found that one, you can't really get rattle cans in the colors I want. I want a signal yellow. The second issue was that that paint's very expensive and I'd waste a lot of it just doing this small area. I still need to do the control cabinet and the user module so it kind of makes sense just to buy the paint and then spray it. I'm going to need something like MEPA EP100 but I only need about a liter of undercoat and maybe a liter of green and a half a liter of yellow paint would do me fine. So if anyone knows of a vendor in Austria that sells like MEPA EP100 or an equivalent epoxy two component paint in smaller quantities please drop me a line in the comment section and let me know. Well as is often the case I got a little bit less done this week than I was hoping but Oh well, just keep plugging away at it, it'll be done sooner or later. Thanks a lot for watching.